not a spring chicken today. For our Collins Daily, we're going to be talking about, okay, of course, who's in attendance at CANS today? Best open it up. You know, we got, um, uh, okay, I, I, Benedict which she's in, we'll be talking about Israel Broussard, Michael Cohen, Benicio mm -hmm. uh, Ben, 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 ben Del Toro, Leonardo DiCaprio, Gary Duran. We're, we're trying to talk about different actors and actresses that you may be familiar with, uh, or actually that we're familiar with in our American audiences. Because I actually don't know who Yu Jang or Anar Goodmanson or Val uh, Valerie Galeno, yes, uh, mm -hmm. Julie Cabot, or Costa Gravis we, is, is well known, but most of the people... Most of these people I have not heard of. We know that Biling is there, Carlos Ramirez, Burgundy Phoenix, Vincent DePaul, because these are people that we know um, we know Leonardo DiCaprio is there, um, Bileen, um, Emma Watson, because he, we're doing the bling ring, right? Yeah. Amat Ascalante, because he's on one of the juries. Yeah, and, um, and uh, let's see, we got uh, Cord, um, Duzan Coase, as we know, um, uh, Claude Lelouch, yes, he's very well known, but I'm missing, no, if, oh, Eva Langora is there now, and Giles Marchand. And, yeah. and, but part of it is I think that they, when they create these lists, they're people that are there either from the jury or they are in films that are screening oh, that day. I know that um, Alain uh, uh, Dillon and, um, and uh, Jean-Paul Belmonto are both being honored. So you know, as is um, Jerry Lewis, they're all there, but they're not on the list, which means they aren't here yet. Ah. This is for today. This is for the 17th, which, is that, which means they could be coming in tonight or tomorrow because they're all being, they're having retro, actually we're talking uh, because that's, we got Robin Wright and Emma Watson, but they're... Yeah, because a lot of these people, they come in just for their event. Yeah. And they're not staying there a lot of extra time. And we'll skip the, down to uh, basically Cinema de la Page uh, is honoring Jean-Paul Belmonto, a French James Bond. Does that mean he looks, was he in James Bond or he just, he's like a French uh, Okay, James what Bond? happened was uh, you'd have to understand that the French cinema basically really likes the, you know, okay, um, people like that, Jean-Paul, Jean, Jean Desjardins, basically was famous also for playing a, a James Bondish type French secret agent. Oh, so he's a kind of French James a French, Bond. But it's their but version, just, their, yeah. their idea, and the, the man from Rio, I always thought was a comedy, so. Oh, really? It's uh, Mark uh, Philip de Broca and Jean-Paul Belmonto's second collaboration following the success of Cartouche, which I thought was a comedy too. Mm -hmm. So, uh, while on leave, because he's a front member of the French Foreign Legion, which is funny, he actually he liked to play French legionnaires a lot. The le guy that was a legionnaire, which I think was Alain Delon, never played a soldier in his life. Mm -hmm. So, um, at time, at, 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 the film was shot in 19... Oh, while on leave, um, he witnesses the kidnapping of his fiancée, Agnes, the daughter of a famous ethnologist. He sets off to rescue her, which takes him to Brazil between Rio and Brazil, following a Brazilian stolen statue from the Museum de la Homme in France, in Paris. So, mm -hmm. and it was shot in 1972. The film was one of Steven Spielberg's ideas for the Indiana Jones saga. Oh. Yeah. Uh, the hero, alias uh, John Paul Dono, is a kind of French James Bond. Well, he, not, he didn't have a license to kill. He captured a blend of courage and honor given to And James humor. Bond. Yeah, humor. Oh. No, no, humor. It's a comedy. It's, oh. it's, and it's funny. And, you know, most people think of John Paul Vimonto with his cigarette and his, his playing like uh, Eddie Constantine, you know, uh, and, you know, with basically Frosch and stuff. He's a funny guy, folks. He still is at his age. Well, also talking about James Bond, George Lazenby is being honored in the city of Las Vegas. They're calling today George Lazenby Day yeah. in the city of Las Vegas, and he was one of the James Bonds. Yeah, and French Fra Duyac, I told you, she's extremely humorous in this role. She basically had no sense of humor in this role. Who? Francois Duyac. So, I think, you know, so, um, the man from Rio confirmed the beginning of a long cinematic relationship with the actor and Philip de Boca. They would go on to shoot Tribulations of a Chairman in China, the Tribulations of Luciana, and Le Magnifique, and Incorrigible. So, um, let me go back up to the, to the quote of the day. So I just thought that since we were talking about Don Monto, we would jump down to the Johnny thing Dumont. I had about Bon. Yes. They, okay, they're, uh, he's, they're honoring him. I know he's there. Yeah. He's, they're, they're honoring the man for, 
I mean, he's. Um, That's how you know they'll probably show up. They, the they're honor. being honored specifically for a film that they saw. So it's a, the, the, a lot of this stuff is restorations. And mm -hmm. it was a restoration. I mean, you helped to restore it because you're getting, oh, I found the rings we've been looking for. Mm -hmm. I've been and looking for the rings they're sitting right You found them? Yeah. Ah, how, why are they out here? I don't know. They, we're not supposed to be out here. Somebody else put them out here. I know. So they're, because they're supposed not. to be inside. <laughs> anyway, the quote of the day is, I have the need to feel very close to my audience, and there is more, no more universal experience than family. Asghar Farhadi. Yeah. Uh, basically, in comp he's in competition with the past, held his press conference surrounded by his cast to Haram. Bernadette Bijou, who I've actually met. That's why they're on the list. Yeah. Uh, Aisha Moffat and Pauline Barrett. Actually, she tends to make movies with her husband. Oh, she does? Remember that the husband, the director that won the, the for um, uh, for the artist, that's her, uh, the director, that's her husband. Mm -hmm. I remember funny, she said, my, the, the, what they were most concerned was is that they had to teach her to dance. You know what I find interesting is this comment that by Asghar Farhadi, which is every spectator can make the film their own. I know, and that's uh, something. It kind of makes you curious as to what they're doing in that film. So on working with the actors, the rehearsals, and the language barriers, Tahar Rahim says, Asghar Farhadi has a very special way of working. Very precise, down to the tiniest mm -hmm. detail. What happened? I know. I what, did not touch it. It, it changed. <laughs> what it did was it changed the size on me, and it happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and yet, as a result of the rehearsal and the sharing it involved, you end up feeling free. Yeah, so. And Berenice Bijo. Or is it Bejo? Berenice Bijo. Bijo? Bijo. <laughs> Know. Okay, it says, we worked with a translator and Arish's voice came to be that of Asgar. There was so little time lag in our discussion that we really could, that we really could listen to each other. It is, it as very enjoyable. Yeah, well, Bicho is something, she's the anomaly. She's actually not French, she's from Latin America. Oh, she is? Yeah, and basically, if you look carefully, she's done, a, she's done commercials in the United States for cell phone companies. But people oh, don't pay any but they, attention. But they don't even realize it's her. So yeah. they don't realize it's her. So. And Ali Mosafa, I was on the other side of the barrier. I thought we went. I, I thought it was down there. I got that no. right down. Right there. Oh. I was on the other side of the barrier, and in the end, we all ended up working in each other's languages. It was an extraordinary experience as we went beyond words. Now, now it's making me think of what kind of language were they doing it in? Uh, Obviously, Mosafa is probably. Uh, um, a Muslim, I'm guessing, so. Mm. Okay, uh, actually, I'm part of uh, Okay, I'm trying to get this. You can tell it's live, folks, because we're getting there. There's the next page. Okay. Pauline Burlett, the rehearsal scorched bonds between the actors, which helped free us up and enabled us to give our all. Yeah, I like it. Uh, for, uh, Ashlar Faradi, the joy of writing is one that can't be shared with others, but in the rehearsals you can share the process with actors, which gives them a sense of freedom and freshness. The best compliment anyone could pay me would be to say that the screenplay itself disappears from view, uh, mm -hmm. in the nationality of film. Uh, whenever I work in the world, I, I am and remain an Iranian filmmaker. It is difficult to attach a national label to a work of art, but I don't think we should be asking the question as the answer. It's pretty unimportant. The most important thing is the bond between the spectator and film. But I, I want to tell you something. I'm, I worked with Sidney Poitier when Sidney Poitier was young, and Sidney Poitier said, "I'm not a black man. I'm an actor." Mm -hmm. He said, "If they, if they, if they, you can go hire a lot of people that are black men. I am an actor. If you want to hire me, you're hiring me because I'm an actor." He did play black roles. It makes you, it makes you kind of wonder what this film is really about because here he talks about censorship. Yeah, well, it helped again on me. Like I said, it's. Uh, I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, he jumped a lot. Right there. You no, know what happens is it's live, and this thing is awfully sensitive. I don't have a mouse over here. Okay. Um, this this would make makes me wonder about this film because he says there are two types of censorship: official censorship and self censorship, which is much more dangerous. When I leave my country, the restrictions no longer weigh me down, but I am still subject to a condition that's beyond my control. I try to see that as a, an advantage rather a, than a hindrance and to respond in a creative way. Which means if you're going to make a film outside of Iran, it sure as heck better not criticize Iran, because if you go back, you end up... Um, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, if you make something critical of well, Iran, you, you don't go back. Well, even remember some of the Indian movies, because 
what they they were by Indian filmmakers and then they film they film it and then their own country does not appreciate how they're oh, perceived. Well, I mean they they really were unhappy about slum dog folks mm -hmm. in India. I mean they did not like that whatsoever. I mean I didn't realize how much taller you are with those six inch heels. Well, are you six inches? Yeah, kind of tall. They're not, she's got heels next to me, folks. They're so, kind of tall. Yeah, okay. they know. <laughs> Yeah, but now we've got the uh, Cannes Classics, which is uh, Senegal and the Philippines restored by the World Cinema Foundation. And with 16 films restored in its 60 years of, of existence, the World Cinema Foundation offers a new lease of life to masterpieces of the past. Actually, that's pretty cool. Yep. Founded in Cannes by Martin Scorsese, the organization gives countries lacking the necessary funds the chance to preserve the treasures of their film heritage. Today, two restored films are being projected at Cannes Classics. Oh, that's where the Cleopatra one is being yeah. done. That would be really cool to see. Yeah, I, I, I worked on the original version. I worked on that puzzle thing, so folks. I was in a lot of the Roddy McDowell. If you look for the scenes of where Roddy McDowell is, I tended to be one of the, the soldiers in those scenes. Mm -hmm. So this year, a Sen Senegalese short film for the 1960s attracted attention of World Cinema Foundation. Boram Surat by Usman Sembene uh, is the story of a cart driver who turns his vehicle into a taxi. One day, when crossing a part of town where carts are not allowed, he stops at a source of <coughs> income, and his source of income is taken away. Director Usam Sembene is considered a great militant artist in Africa. He died in 2007 at the age of 84, leaving behind a dozen films and several novels. Well, that's a shame. He only had, uh, only a dozen films. A militant life. artist, which means what? He, he was basically not allowed to do filmmaking, but he still was a young person. Uh, 84. That's young? Well, for filmmakers, I mean, there's guys, look at Clint Eastwood's 82. Well, he's a youngster. Yeah, so Clint Eastwood's 82 and still working. A lot of people, a lot of directors and a lot of directors and producers make films until the day they die. Mm -hmm. So it means he was not allowed to make films when he was younger. And then when he got older, he was it was beyond his time frame, so he probably didn't make movies anymore after a certain age. Mm -hmm. So we journey to the Philippines with the second film restored by the World Cinema Foundation, The Claws of Light by Lino Broca. The film follows the story of Julio, a young fisherman who leaves his peaceful village to look for his girlfriend, who has disappeared in Manila. With 50 films to his name, Leo Broca forged a reputation in the Philippines by creating popular cinema marked by his country's political and social problems. I know, so that's a, that's a big deal because the, the difference between the attitudes between the two countries. The Philippines has um, basically has been driven by the, by the United States, is Subic Bay and Clark Field. Mm -hmm. where the uh, gentleman from South Africa basically for years because of apartheid was not allowed to practice his field if it was anything that was politically incorrect. Mm -hmm. We've got Cannes Classics, eight directors in the Olympic arena. Ah, so they returned to the Olympic Games? No, no, Held in Munich in 1972 mm -hmm. with a restored copy of Visions of Eight, the famous documentary film that was filmed during the games by eight major filmmakers. Anybody remembers the Munich Olympics? That's when uh, they have a that, that's like when that? they killed all the Israeli athletes. Oh. Yeah, that's when you know greatness. Uh, greatness happened upon a lot of people that happened to be in the right spot at the wrong time, and most of these these directors were all there, and they captured. And I think it won an. I'm not certain. I think it won the Academy Award that year because they uh, because all you know uh, because they were filming. You know, it, it, it was shot almost a year after the Munich Olympics at the Festival of the Cannes Screen Visions of Eight in the World Preview. The images of the hostage taking and assassination of 11 Israeli athletes by a group of Palestinian terrorists during a game were still fresh in the minds of 850 million viewers around the world. And it was in this um, particular context that eight famous directors, including Milos Forman and Claude Lelouch, had chosen to position their cameras as close to the athletes involved in the games. The idea was to take a step back from the purely athletic treatment of the event and to blank out its political context marked by the bloody news story in order to present eight different points of view on the athletic spirit itself. It's actually probably pretty good. Well, you know, it's a, it's a great film, folks, because what happened was there's, there's, uh, there's actually multi-versions of this movie. There's the mo there, it, it's, it's not just one, it's like eight directors happen to be in eight important spots at the wow. same time. And you have... Their cameras at work in each one of these areas, reporting what, recording what went on. It's actually probably pretty fascinating. Yeah, it's one of the things. It's one of the great 
I think it was one of the great documentaries ever done. So. Milos Forman, for example, chose to focus on the decathletes, Claude Latouche on the losers, and Michael um, Fledler on the women. Yeah. Selected out of competition, the documentary is a tribute to the very essence of the Olympic Games, and it met with widespread critical acclaim. Today, it's presented mm -hmm. in a restored 4K digital copy. Mm -hmm. That. That big that, that time. It means it's being redone for the future, folks. That. That's one of those ones that you're going to see in the schools and universities. Yeah, you're going to probably... And as film students. And it means they're going to re-release it now because 4K is a big process meant to be... It gives you greater definition, which means they're going. you're going to see that back on the screen again. It but, was a great movie see, when it was made. This is something in 1972, 4K did not exist. I know. So... They shot it with the best what equipment What was it, 8mm probably? They the had 8 and 16mm cameras that they were using because they were... The 35, they had small 35s, but you would have, that probably would have been Super 8, mm -hmm. Super 8 and, 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 and Super 16, because they were the only thing that was really portable enough to capture the moment. Most of what you saw captured was done strictly by these people and by the ABC Sports Division, which, mm -hmm. well, well, another thing that most people don't understand about ABC Sports, ABC Sports was ran by Rune Arledge, who was the head of news. Mm -hmm. And basically, he put news and, and put news and sports together. And then, because they, it was like um, most people, like David Letterman was in the right spot at the right time to win all the awards for the 9/11 stuff. He was the only person in New York that didn't go bonkers. And well, I'm not going to do that because he sat there because Letterman has a Letterman was a journalist. He sat there. It was Letterman's shining moment, and everybody in the world remembers it. He got got a Peabody Awards or anything you think of. For his work, because he brought news people on every night to talk about it. So I know if I step backwards, <laughs> I can hear me. No, I don't. I, I rock back, but it's not important. I'm not screen noting important. But this is what we got for today, and we, every day is a little bit different. We hope to have more news, but I mean, we know that the people in the United States are more interested in the American movie. Well, not. we're waiting for the American movie. The Great Gatsby. Great Gatsby is a dead movie already. So. Yeah. I still want to see it. I, well, you can go see it next Tuesday then. Yeah, that's when the cheap seats are. Yeah. But it's kind of like some other movies that like are dead on arrival. Yeah, because you, you couldn't make as money back. I mean, we, we, we'll tell you Star Trek was dead on arrival, folks. But uh, until the next time, this is uh, it's a, <laughs> this is old camera. And this is not a spring chicken. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow for more information. You can go to mbn www .com or www.thetravelsuite.com on the internet. Because there, on the two sites, you're going to, well, you're going to find all the information on Cannes. Um, yeah. <laughs> right, so you come and like us and friend us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. But most of all, just go to both of the websites, uh, thetravelsuite.com and mbnnewsvideoweb.com, and you'll find the information because we'll have more information regarding Cannes. But we also do have, especially on mbnnewsvideoweb.com, information regarding other events that we're covering as well as other news that we're covering. And the news will not necessarily be the same. This part here will be on MBN News Video Web uh, and the stuff directly about can't, you know, uh, social events and travel and stuff will be on a travel suite. Mm -hmm. They're two separate things we shoot at the same time so that they're not the same, they're not stepping on one another. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, so come join us for more. This is our Cannes updates for 2013 from the Festival de Cannes and Marche du Film in South of France. Happy Cannes. Beautiful. Hey, how's that? Cool. So, yeah.